Welcome to Joe's Classroom and the lecture series on Frequency Domain Analysis. In lectures 1, 2 and 3 of Frequency Domain Analysis, we have seen that if we give an input of A sin omega t, that is a sinusoidal input of amplitude A with frequency omega to an LTA system, whose transfer function is g of s, then the output also will be a sinusoidal signal with the same frequency as the input, but there will be two changes when it is compared to the input. The two changes are one in the amplitude and the other in the phase. Amplitude will be either amplified or attenuated by a factor called magnitude of g of j omega where g of j omega is nothing but g of s in which s is replaced by j omega and when s is replaced in g of s by j omega it is called as sinusoidal transfer function or transfer function in frequency domain so the change in the magnitude or the amplitude will be by a factor of magnitude of g of j omega because for a specific frequency g of j omega will be a complex number being a complex number it will have its magnitude as well as angle so this magnitude of g of j omega will alter the magnitude of the input when it is passed through a LTA system and the angle of g of j omega will affect the phase of the output signal. Therefore, if one is interested to know what kind of transformation that input signal will undergo when it is passed through an LTA system, it is just sufficient to know how this g of j omega varies with respect to frequency. Plotting g of j omega with respect to frequency is what we call it as frequency response and this frequency response can be represented in different forms. So the few important forms are the Bode plot, the polar plot or the Nyquist plot and the Nyquist chart. So in Bode plot we take the frequency in the x-axis in a logarithmic scale and the magnitude will be converted to decibels and it will be taken in the vertical axis. When it comes to the phase plot, again the frequency will be in logarithmic scale whereas the angle in degrees will be taken in a linear scale. With this introduction, we will just move on to understand the Bode plot a little more and to understand this Bode plot we have chosen the simple dynamic systems. When I say simple dynamic system I mean the dynamic systems whose mathematical models will be very simple. So such system systems are the integrators and differentiators. If I take an integrator its Laplace transform will be just 1 by s. So that means the characteristic polynomial is only s and when equate when this is equated to 0 it means that s is equal to 0 that means it has got a pole at origin and if you take a differentiator its laplace transform will be s and since s is in the numerator when if if it is equated to 0 so we mean that this transfer function has got a 0 at the origin so the integrator and differentiator as the simplest mathematical representation in Laplace domain or S domain. So in a system, there may be multiple integrators or differentiators, cascaded differentiators and integrators as shown in this block diagram and maybe gain also among the cascaded blocks. So, if we model such a system, the ultimate uh, transfer function in the case of a cascaded integrators is g of s is equal to k by 
s power n, where n is the number of integrators in the system. So similarly, if there are differentiators in the system, then the transfer function is going to be k into s power n, where again, capital N means that it is number of differentiators in the system. So in this lecture, we will understand how the body plot of these transfer functions will look like. And again, before trying to understand the body plot of these transfer functions, k by s power n and k into s power n, we will start with a case still simpler, that is a transfer function with only the gain k. First, let me assume that the gain k is equal to 1. That means g of s is equal to 1. To plot the frequency response, we need to know g of j omega. So in this case, there is only constant. So therefore, g of j omega is also 1. So we need to separate the magnitude and angle. The magnitude of g of j omega is again 1. And this magnitude has to be converted to decibels. How do we convert? We convert it to taking a logarithm to the base 10 and again multiplying it by 20. That is 20 log mod of g of j omega. So that means 20 log 1 that is equal to 0 decibels. Also, if you take the angle, angle of 1 in the complex plane is going to be 0 because 1 is a real number, positive real number. It will be there on the positive real axis. The angle corresponding to positive real axis is 0 degree. So we got both the gain in decibels and the angle. So we can plot it in the uh, semi-log graph. Hope you will remember that semi-log graph is a graph in which the horizontal axis will have values in logarithmic scale and the vertical axis will have the values on a linear scale. So I have started from 0 0.01 and the next marking will be 10 times 10 power minus 2 or 10 times 0 0.01 that is 0 0.1 or 10 power minus 1. 10 power minus 1 multiplied by 10 is 10 power 0 or this is nothing but it is equal to 1. And 1 multiplied by 10 is 10 power 1 or 10. 10 power 1 multiplied by 10 is again 10 power 2 or 100 and 1000. 10,000 and it goes on in multiples of 10. Okay, so anyhow, the magnitude here is 0 decibels irrespective of the frequency variation or increase in the frequency. Therefore, this body magnitude plot is going to be a straight line at 0 decibels. How about the phase plot? Again, the phase plot is also 0 degree irrespective of the frequency and therefore that is also going to be a straight line at zero degree. So what we understand is for a system with a transfer function of g of s is equal to one, the magnitude will be zero decibels or the magnitude will be one and which means that and magnitude will be one and the phase angle will be zero for all frequencies. That means whatever you give in the input will appear at the output irrespective of the frequency variation if g of s is equal to 1. Okay, now let us take the second case where I increase the gain and I take the gain greater than 1. So g of s is equal to 2 and g of j omega is also 2. So the magnitude of g of j omega is again 2. If I convert it to decibels, 20 log of 2 is equal to 6.0206 decibels. And if I take the angle, angle of 2 is 0 because again 2 is also a real number, positive real number and therefore the corresponding angle is 0. Again, if I plot it, it is going to be a straight line at 0, 6 0.0206 decibels because it is going to be a constant and there is no omega term therefore it is going to be a constant and the 
magnitude is going to remain the same irrespective of the frequency variation and similarly the phase angle also is going to be the same irrespective of the frequency which means that the input will be amplified by a factor of 2 it will be amplified by a factor of 2 and no phase will be added and this will be valid irrespective of the frequency variation. Now we will take another value in which gain is again increased. I take g of s is equal to 10 and g of j omega is also 10. The magnitude is 10. So converted to the decibels gives you 20 decibels. How about the angle? Again, 10 is also a positive real number and therefore it will have a angle 0 degree. So if I plot it, this is what I will get. So you will be able to see that initially my k value was 1 and this line was here and when I increase the k value to 2, it became approximately plus 6 decibels and is shifted up a little. Again, I increase the gain from 2 to 10, when I increase the gain from 2 to 10, the gain in decibels became 20. That means again it is shifted up from 6 to 20. So you will be able to understand that if I increase the gain further, this line will be shifted up more and more. How about the phase? It always remains at zero degree because irrespective of the value, it is going to be a positive real number and therefore the angle is going to be zero degree. So what if the gain is decreased from one? That means the gain has got some value between zero and one. So for example, I have taken g of s is equal to 0 0.2 and g of j omega is equal to 0 0.2 and the magnitude is 0 0.2. Again, if I take the 20 log on it, I'll be getting minus 13.979 dB. The angle, again, it is going to be zero because this is also a positive real number. So only thing you'll be able to notice is when the gain was above one, the gain in decibels I got in positive. So when the gain is decreased below 1, the gain converted to decibels is negative. So if I plot this, you will be able to see that the line is shifting down. So this is my minus 13.979 line and it is going to be a straight line because it is a constant value and the phase also remains at zero degree irrespective of the frequency variation. So what do we conclude? For a transfer function g of s is equal to k, the corresponding Bode plot, both magnitude and phase plot will have only horizontal straight lines. So the magnitude plot is a horizontal straight line at 20 log k. If k is 1, log 1 is equal to 0 and therefore it will be at 0 decibels and if I increase it beyond 1, the magnitude plot will shift it up above the 0 decibels line and if the magnet k value is lesser than 1 but greater than 0, the body magnitude plot is shifted down below 0 decibels. What about the phase plot? Phase plot is again a horizontal straight line at zero degree irrespective of the value of k okay so this is what we need to remember regarding the constant gain in the transfer function now let us take a transfer function with a pole at the origin i mean a transfer function g of s is equal to one by s so what is g of j omega S has to be replaced by j omega. That's it. And what about its magnitude? 
j could be omitted when I write the magnitude, it is 1 by omega. So let me convert it to decibels, 20 log g of j omega, that is equal to minus 20 log omega. How do you get? It is 20 log 1 by omega. 1 by omega can be written as omega power minus 1. That minus 1 could be taken here. And therefore, this 20 becomes minus 20 log omega. If you look at this is no more a constant because omega appears in the equation and therefore the gain in decibels varies with respect to omega. How does it vary? If I take log omega as the x-axis, isn't it in the form mx, y is equal to mx kind of thing? So because anyhow we have got the frequency in the logarithmic scale in a semi-log graph. And therefore, I can very well compare this to y is equal to mx, which means that the slope of the line is going to be minus 20. So, I got a straight line equation in a semi-log graph with a slope of minus 20. It would be of help to me if I can get another point also on the line so that I can completely sketch this line. So to get a point, it is better to take omega is equal to 1 radians per second. And for omega is equal to 1 radians per, per second, if we substitute here, it is going to be g of j omega is going to be 1. And when it is converted to decibels, you will get it as 0 decibels, which means that when omega is equal to 1 radians per second, the decibels value, otherwise the gain in decibels is going to be 0 decibels. So I have to plot a line with a slope of minus 20 passing through 1 comma 0 decibels. Okay. What about the phase angle? G of j omega is 1 by j omega and its angle I can calculate in this way. If I have two complex numbers z1 and z2 and if I divide z1 by z2 then the angle of the resultant complex number will be the difference between the angle of the numerator complex number and the denominator complex number. So the angle of any complex number is given by tan inverse of b by a where b is the imaginary part and a is the real part. Therefore angle of g of j omega is angle of 1 minus angle of j omega. Angle of 1 being a positive real number it is going to be 0 degree and angle of j of j omega can be obtained using the formula tan inverse of b by a where b is the imaginary part and a is the real part. Since this is a purely imaginary number, real part is going to be 0 and therefore the angle contributed by j omega is tan inverse of omega by 0. Omega by 0 is nothing but the infinity and this is tan inverse of infinity. Because of this negative sign, we get minus tan inverse of infinity. We know tan inverse of infinity is 90 degree and therefore the phase contribution is minus 90 degree. Please note that the magnitude varies with respect to omega, whereas the angle remains constantly at minus 90 degree irrespective of the frequency. Okay, so now let us sketch the Bode magnitude plot and the phase plot. So I already told that this is going to be a straight line with a slope of minus 20. Now you should know how to take this minus 20 in a Bode plot. So let me explain that. So as I already explained to you, the Bode plot divisions are in multiples of 10. So if this is 1, this is 
10 times 1, that is nothing but 10. The distance between this frequency, that is 1, and it 10 times value is what we call it as 1 decade. The magnitude axis is going to be a linear scale, and I have taken each division as 20 decibels, and therefore this distance is 20 decibels. Please note this is 1 decade and this is 20 decibels. One decade need not be from uh, 1 to 10 or 10 to 100 or 100 to 1000. The only condition is if I take a particular frequency, the next frequency that is the frequency at one decade apart should be 10 times the first frequency. For example, this is 100 and this is 200 and this is 300. Okay, so this corresponds to 300 radians per second. So what is the 10 times of 300? It is 3000. So this is 1000, this is 2000, and this is 3000. So therefore, if I take the distance from 300 to 3000, that is also one decade. Okay. So this is one decade and this is 20 decibels and this is one decade and this is also 20 decibels. Now if I draw a line like this, the slope of this line I call it as minus 20 decibels per decade because when the frequency increases by one decade, the magnitude falls down by 20 decibels okay decibels so therefore because it is a drop i take it as a negative sign and this is a slope of minus 20 decibels per decade the same is valid for this box also this line also okay here also as the frequency increases by one decade the gain of the magnitude falls by 20 decibels and the slope of these two lines is minus 20 decibels per decade. And at the same time, if I have a line like this, if the frequency increases by one decade, the magnitude increases by 20 decibels. The same case here also. So in this case, this line will have a slope of 20 decibels per decade. Okay, so hope you understood how to take the slopes or how to measure the slopes in this semi-log graph. So for us, we want to draw a line minus 20 log omega, that is a straight line with minus 20 decibels per decade slope and passing through 1 comma 0 decibels. So let us do that. So this is the plane semi-log graph. First thing what we need to know is the point through which the line goes. It is 1 comma 0. Let us mark it. This is 1. 10 power 0 is 1 and the 0. So this is the point. Okay. Now I know this line passes through this, this point and will have a slope of minus 20 decibels per decade. So when it increases by, when the frequency increases by one decade, the drop in the magnitude will be 20 decibels. Since this is a negative sign, we come down and therefore this is what is the point. So this is what is the line and this line I can write it as minus 20 log omega. Please note that this axis is log omega axis because the frequency is in logarithmic scale. That is why this line is represented as minus 20 log omega. So the magnitude plot is over. What about the phase plot? Phase plot is going to be 
a straight line at minus 90 degree simply a straight line so we got the magnitude plot and phase plot of the body plot for the transfer function g of s is equal to 1 by s let us move on to get the body plot of transfer function with multiple poles only at the origin in that case the transfer function is given by g of s is equal to k by s power n where n is the order of the integration or n is the number of poles at the origin please note that we have included the open loop gain also into this transfer function we need to get the frequency response in that case we need to find out g of j omega it's obtained by just replacing s by j omega so we get k by j omega the whole power n to get this Bode magnitude plot and the phase plot the magnitude and the phase of this g of j omega have to be separated magnitude of g of j omega is given by k by omega power n the j is omitted and it has to be converted to decibels we will convert it to decibels by 20 log magnitude of j of j omega it is to the base 10 and we get 20 log k by omega power n we know that log a by b is equal to log a minus log b using that i can write it as 20 log k minus 20 log omega power n however log a power m is equal to m into log a so therefore log omega power n can be written as n into log omega so ultimately i will get the gain in decibels as 20 log k minus 20 n into log omega so let me say this this magnitude in decibels is m db okay so m db represents the magnitude in decibels we got the expression here which represents the magnitude in decibels with respect to omega or with respect to log omega if you look at this expression or if you look at this equation this also looks like an equation of a straight line so it is of the form y is equal to mx plus c we can take minus 20n as slope or m and log omega is x and 20 log k is a constant and therefore i can consider this as c so this also is a straight line therefore so straight line with a slope of minus 20 n so to sketch this straight line as a magnitude plot i need a point on the line also the best point i can take is the point corresponding to omega is equal to 1 radians per second so when omega is equal to 1 radians per second if i substitute here i will get g of j omega as k by 1 or it is equal to k when this k is converted to decibels i will get 20 log k please note that this value and this value of the same so therefore in the equation of the Bode magnitude plot the constant term is nothing but the magnitude of the Bode plot at omega is equal to 1 radians per second so we got a clear idea about the magnitude plot now let us find out what is going to be the phase if i have two complex numbers z1 and z2 whose magnitudes are r1 and r2 respectively and similarly the phase or the angle corresponding to z1 is theta1 and the angle corresponding to z2 is theta2 in that case if i multiply them then the magnitude is going to be r1 into r2 and the phase is going to be theta1 plus theta2 
So this is valid for any number of multiplications. So if you look at this g of j omega, for which we need to find out the phase angle, we can write it as k into 1 by j omega the whole power n. That is 1 by j omega is multiplied n times. Therefore, its angle, angle of g of j omega is going to be the sum of the angles contributed by this 1 by j omega term for n times. Therefore, it is nothing but n into angle of 1 by j omega. We already got the angle of 1 by j omega as minus 90 degree. Therefore, angle of g of j omega, I can write it as n times minus 90 degree. Let us consolidate the results. If this is the transfer function, then the magnitude is given by 20 log k minus 20 n log omega in decibels. And the point through which the straight line passes through is omega is equal to 1 and the magnitude is 20 log k and the phase is n times minus 90 degree. Obviously, if I take k is equal to 1 and n also 1, I will get the transfer function 1 by s and if we substitute those values of k and n here, you will get the same expressions what you got previously and which we used for sketching the Bode plot of 1 by s. Now, let us see a few more examples. So, let us take this example. Let us take k is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2. In that case, I will get a transfer function 1 by s power 2, 1 by s square. So, if I apply these expressions what I have already derived, the magnitude in decibels is going to be you know, 20 log 1 minus 20 into 2 log omega, which will result in minus 40 log omega because log 1 is 0. And the point is omega is equal to 1. And since g of j omega is 1, when omega is equal to 1, it's, you know, the uh, magnitude is 0 decibels. That is, the point is 1 comma 0. And the phase angle is minus 90 into 2, that is minus 180 degree. And it can be plus or minus 180 degree because plus or minus doesn't matter when it comes to 180 degree. With this information, we can start sketching the Bode plot. See, the point is 1 comma 0. The Bode magnitude plot passes through 1 comma 0. Let us mark this. And then the slope is minus 40 decibels per decade. So from this, let me move for one decade. And if I move for one decade, the drop in the magnitude is going to be minus 40. So minus 20 and minus 40. So this is the point. So if I connect these two points, I get the Bode magnitude plot and the equation of the line is minus 40 log omega. When it comes to the phase plot, it is minus 180 degree irrespective of the frequency. So therefore, it is going to be a straight line, as I said, minus 180 or plus 180, both are same. Okay, so therefore, we got the Bode plot for this 1 by s square. Now, let us take another example with k is equal to 1 and n is equal to 3. In that case, again, it is 1 by s cube. So, this k, since k is equal to 1, 20 log k will be 0 and n is equal to 3, therefore minus 20 into 3 is equal to minus 60 log omega. And again, since this k is equal to 0, sorry, k is equal to 1 at frequency 
omega is equal to 1 radians per second, the magnitude is going to be 0 decibels and the phase angle is going to be minus 19 to 3 and therefore it is minus 270. Instead of saying it as minus 270, I can say it as plus 90 degree. Again, we can sketch the body plot with this information. Yes, it is 0, 1 because the body plot passes through 1, 0 and the slope is minus 60 decibels per decade. So, move by 1 decade. So, the fall in magnitude is by 60 decibels. So, the slope is minus 60 decibels per decade and this is the body magnitude plot. Again, the phase plot is a constant line at 90 degree. Let us take the third example where k is equal to 2. In the previous two examples, k was 1. Now, I am taking a value for k which is higher than 1 and n is equal to 1. So, in that case, the transfer function is 2 by s. Okay. k is equal to 2, therefore 20 log k is 6.0206 and since n is equal to 1, this is going to be minus 20 log omega. Now, for a frequency 1 radians per second, the value is going to be 20 log k which is nothing but 6.0206 decibels. The angle is minus 90 into 1, that is minus 90 degree. Yes, we can sketch the Bode plot. The point is 1, 6.0206, 1, 1, this is the point, correspond 6.0206. And the slope is going to be minus 20 decibels per decade. So, if I move by 1 decade, I, can, I have to drop the, you know, the amp magnitude by 20 decibels. So, this point and this point. So, if I connect these points, I get this line and the equation of this line is 6.0206 minus 20 log omega. So, when it comes to the phase, it is g of j omega is minus 90 degree. It is a constant irrespective of the frequency. So, if the gain had been 1, then the, you know, this transfer function would have been 1 by s. In that case, the line would have been passing through 1 comma 0. But when the gain increased from 1 to 2, what happened? In magnitude, you know, in decibel scale, it was, this green line was lifted up by a magnitude of 6.0206. Otherwise, what I can say is, this is the actual line 6.0206 minus 20 log omega. This is a combination of two lines that is minus 20 log omega which corresponds to 1 by s and another horizontal line at 0 sorry 6.0206 decibels which corresponds to the gain of 2. So, if I add these two green lines, I will get the red line which corresponds to the transfer function 2 by s. Okay, so this is something you should note. Let us go to the example 4. Here I have considered a gain value which is lesser than 1 and n value is taken as 2 and therefore the transfer function is 0 0.1 by s square and if you you know apply these values of k and n this is what you will get. So, we get at 1 radians per second the magnitude as minus 20 decibels and the slope is minus 40 decibels per decade and the phase magnitude phase angle is minus 180 degree or plus 180 degree. Okay, you can just verify just substituting these values of k and n here. Now, let us sketch it. 
the point is 1 comma minus 20 this is 1 comma minus 20 and the slope is minus 40 so move by one decade down by 40 decimals so this is the point so just connect we get the line and the equation of this line is minus 20 minus 40 log omega okay the phase plot is a straight line at 180 degree again let us compare with you know the uh, transfer function of 1 by s square if the gain had been 1 here so in that case this will pass through 0 sorry 1 comma 0 1 comma 0 this is going to be the point through which the line will be passing through in that case the equation is minus 40 log omega but in addition to this minus 40 log omega what has been added is minus 20 that is a straight horizontal line at minus 20 decibels so again if i add these two green lines i will get this red line okay otherwise i can say that this by decreasing the gain you know the, by decreasing the gain by a factor which is lesser than one i am shifting down the body magnitude plot okay that is the point to be noted again okay, phase plot is at minus 180 degree i think with, uh, with this we can conclude or we can you know come to some conclusions for the transfer function g of s given by k by s power n the body plot whether it is magnitude or phase plot is going to be you know uh, of only straight lines the body magnitude plot is a decreasing straight line okay because of the negative slope and the slope is given by minus 20 into n n times minus 20 decibels per decade and it will pass through 20 log k at 1 radius per second. If k is equal to 1, the body magnitude plot passes through 0 decibels at 1 radians per second. If k is greater than 1, body magnitude plot shifts up above 0 decibels line at 1 radians per second. And if it is less than 1, the magnitude plot is shifted down below the 0 decibels line at 1 radians per second about the phase plot it is simply a horizontal line at minus 90 into n or n times minus 90 degree so we have seen how to sketch the body plot of transfer functions with you know multiple poles at the origin now let us see how to sketch the body plot of transfer functions with multiple zeros at the origin. So in that case, the transfer function is given by g of s is equal to k into s power n. Okay, this has got you know multiple zeros at origin. The number of zeros at the origin is given by the value of n capital N. Here also we have included the open loop gain. In the transfer function so let us find out g of j omega is obvious I need not explain this magnitude is this leaving out the j value let us find out the magnitude in decibels of course this is what magnitude of g of j omega is k into omega power n we know log a b is equal to log a plus log b so it is going to be 20 log k plus 20 log omega power n so log a power m is equal to m into log a using that i can write the second term as 20 into n into log omega so ultimately i get this expression 20 log k plus 20 n log omega Okay, so the only difference you will notice 
from the transfer function with multiple poles at origin is this sign. The sign changed from negative sign to a positive sign here because this S term appears in the numerator. Okay. Right. Now, of course, we need to know the point through which the line goes through. This is also a line, straight line in log omega scale. So, therefore, I should get a point on this line to sketch it easily. At 1 radians per second, it is going to be 20 log k as in the previous case or as in the transfer functions with multiple poles at the origin. The phase is going to be, you know, n times the angle of g of j omega. Okay. Uh, we already know that angle of j omega is 90 degree because, you know, uh, because j omega appears in the numerator, it will be plus 90 degree. Okay. And therefore, this angle of g of j omega is n times 90 degree. So, as we did for the transfer function with multiple poles at the origin, we will work out few examples here. Let us take the case of k is equal to 1 and n is equal to 1. So, the transfer function is simply yes. So, the magnitude in decibels is, you know, 20 log 1 plus 20 into 1 log omega. 20 log 1 is 0 and this is 20 into 1 is 20 and therefore this term is 20 log omega. So, at omega is equal to 1 radians per second, it is 0 decibels because k is equal to 1. Angle is going to be 90 into 1, therefore 90. So, please notice the only difference between the transfer function with multiple poles at origin is we get positive sign here as well as in the angle. So, therefore, the slope here is going to be positive. Therefore, the line is going to be increasing. Okay. So, let us sketch it. The point is 1 comma 0. We will take it as 1 comma 0. This is the point and the slope is 20 decibels per decade. So, let me move by 1 decade. I have to move up by 20 decibels. So, these are the points. So, I can connect all these points to get the straight line and this is the equation of the straight line plus 20 log omega. So, the phase plot is a constant straight line at 90 degree and it is worthwhile to compare this, you know, magnitude plot with respect to the magnitude plot of 1 by s, s and 1 by s. Okay, so what was the magnitude plot for g of s is equal to 1 by s? This is what that also passes through, you know, 1 comma 0. The only difference is in the case of 1 by s, the, you know, the slope is going to be minus 20 decibels per decade. So, both these lines are just the mirror images. Please note that. Okay. So, it obviously means that the S square and 1 by S square will have a mirror image because both will be passing through 1 comma 0 and 1 will have 1 by S square will have minus 40 decibels per decade and S square will have plus 40 decibels per decade. Okay. Now, let us move on to the second example. Here, I have taken a constant gain of greater than 1. That is, I have taken a value of 10 here and n value I have taken is 2. So, the transfer function is 10 s square and if you substitute these values of k and n, you will get these expressions. These are all 
very self-explanatory. Now with these details let us plot omega is equal to 1, the magnitude is 20 decibels, 1, 20 and the slope is 40 decibels up because it's positive, okay, 20, 40, line is 20 plus 40 log omega, just connect. The phase plot is going to be minus 180 degree and it is going to be a straight line. So I have taken a gain of k is equal to 10 which is greater than 1. So in that case at 1 radians per second it has moved up by 20 decibels. Okay. Assume that the k is going to be 0 0.1 in that case this value will be minus 20 therefore this will come down you know this magnitude plot will be shifted down by 20 decibels yeah sorry this one from 0 decibels it will be shifted down it will go like this okay so with these discussions again i can conclude that if the transfer function is k into s power n again the body plot is going to have only the straight lines and it is an increasing straight line here because the slope is positive 20 n n times 20 and at 1 radians per second it passes through 20 log k in decibels. If k is equal to 1 it will be passing through 0 decibels at 1 radians per second. If k is greater than 1 it will be shifting up and if it is less than 1 it will be shifted down and the phase plot is a horizontal line at plus n times 90 degree. Now let us look at a few more examples. I am not going to you know show the sketches of the body plot but this table will give you a clear idea you now uh, in understanding the body plot. Let me take a term, the transfer function term as 0 0.01 by s what you are able to identify here is the k value is 0 0.01 and the n value is 1. Okay. So very well you are able to notice that since s appears in the denominator it is corresponding to a pole or it is corresponding to an integrator and the order of integrator or the order of the pole or the number of poles at the origin is 1 because this is s power 1. Okay, It corresponds to a pole and the order is 1. So therefore the slope of the magnitude plot is going to be minus 20 decibels per decade because it is going to be minus 20 n. Why this minus sign comes? Because it is a pole the s term appears in the denominator so therefore this negative sign comes and why is it 20 it is 20 n times 20 n is 1 and therefore it is minus 20 the slope is going to be minus 20 decibels per decade what about the magnitude of this you know the magnitude plot at a frequency of 1 radians per second it is given by 20 log k since k is equal to 0 0.01 its value is going to be minus 40 so therefore you got the point as 1 comma minus 40 start with that point and then you have to consider the slope then get the straight line so if you get that straight line the equation of the straight line is going to be this see this is minus 20 and therefore this is minus 20 log omega and this value comes here as a constant. So this is the equation. Okay. And what about the phase? Phase, you know, offered by this pole, a single pole is you know, minus 90 degree because it is a pole and since it is S appearing in the denominator, we get the negative sign. And since the order is 1, it is simply 90 degree. Okay, so you can plot the phase plot also.
Now let us take another example. It is 5 by S square. This also corresponds to pole. The number of poles at the origin is 2 because it's an S square. Okay. And because it is a pole and S term, you know, comes in the denominator, it is a negative sign since n is equal to 2, it is 20 into 2 is 40 and k is value is 5. Okay. So, since k is greater than 1, you will get a positive number here in decibels. It's 3.9794 and the equation is going to be this and we can use this information to sketch the body plot as I explained for the previous cases. Okay. The angle also you get it as minus 180 degree because it's because it's uh, negative because it's a pole and 180 degree because the order is 2 and 90 into 2 is 180 degree. Okay. The same way here 1 by s power 5. It's, it is also a pole but the order is 5. And therefore, the slope of the magnitude plot is going to be minus 100 decibels per decade. Since this, you know, the gain is 1, k is 1, 20 log k is 0. Therefore, the equation of this line is going to be minus 100 log omega. And this is going to be minus 19 to 5. 19 to 5 is 450. 450 angle, you know, can be... Uh, in a simple way, it can be represented as minus 90 degree. Now, 100, yes. So, S appears in the numerator here. So, therefore, it is corresponding to a 0. Okay. So, the order of 0, otherwise, order of differentiation is 1. And therefore, the slope contribution is plus 20 degree because this appears in the numerator. Okay. And the order is 1, it is plus 20 into 1 is plus 20. Whereas the magnitude in decibels is 20 log k, k is 100. If you substitute, you will get plus 40. So the line equation is given by 40 plus 20 log omega. And since it is 1, n is equal to 1, you know, the phase angle contribution is. 90 into 1 is 90 degree. Since it is a 0, it is plus. Okay, the S yes term appears in the numerator. So, you get a plus sign here. So, of course, just go through this. Just go through this. I'm not going to explain this. Another one more example is here. You can just look at it. So, in all these explanations, you know, I took the transfer function term first and then I got, you know, the Bode magnitude plot or the phase plot parameters. We can go on the reverse direction also. For example, if the slope is negative, immediately you can infer that it corresponds to a pole corresponds to S terms in the denominator. Okay. And if the slope is positive, it corresponds to zeros and the S terms will be appearing in the numerator. Okay. So, that is the first point. And what is the slope? From the slope, can you get any information? Yes, you can get the information. If the slope is plus or minus 20, then the order is 1. If the slope is plus or minus 40, then the order is 2. Just divide the slope by 20. For example, this is minus 100. Divided by 20, you will get 5. So that means that is the order. Okay, you got the order. So if you know this order, then immediately you can write whether it is s power 2 or s power 5. Okay or s power 1. Now, the only thing remaining is you should know what is the gain. The gain value is, you know, related to this term, 20 log k. That is the magnitude of the, the magnitude plot at 1 radians per second. See, what is the value of the magnitude plot 
at 1 radians per second. So minus 40 here in this case. So this 20 log k has to be equated to minus 40 and from that you can get the value of k. Okay. So therefore, from this magnitude plot also you can go back and get the transfer function. We are going to do one such example. See, this is what is the you know, Bode plot given to you. You have been given both the magnitude plot as well as the phase plot. Sometimes only the magnitude plots will be given. So, because the magnitude plot alone is sufficient to find the transfer function. Okay, so in this problem, we have been given with you know, both magnitude and the phase plots. The objective is to find out the transfer function. As I said, the first thing is you should find out what is the value of this magnitude at 1 radians per second. At 1 radians per second, the magnitude is minus 13.979 dB. The next step is to find out the slope. Move by 1 dK, see whether there is an increase in magnitude or decrease in magnitude. If there is an increase in magnitude, then the slope has to be taken as positive and if there is a decrease in magnitude, the slope has to be negative. Here, this magnitude increases, you know, uh, when I move by one decade in the x-axis direction. So, therefore, it is positive. By how much decibels it increases? By 60 decibels in one decade and therefore, the slope is plus 60 decibels per decade. These are the two informations you need. You can immediately get the transfer function. Okay, so the equation is minus 13.979 plus 60 log omega and using this gain value at 1 radians per second, I can calculate the k value. 20 log k has to be equated to this value. And from this 20 can be brought to this side. So this will be the value that is log 10. This is to the base 10. Okay. So log 10, log k to the base 10 is equal to this value. Okay. So I can convert this to an exponential form. So I get this k value I got. Okay. Now this slope is 60 decibels per decade plus 60 decibels per decade. And therefore, since this is positive, you know, it corresponds to zeros or S terms are appearing in the numerator and, you know, 60 corresponds to uh, order of n is equal to 3 and therefore the term is x cube. We got k as well as, you know, the uh, S terms. So the transfer function is 0 0.2 s cube. Okay. Uh, you should be uh, noting that, you know, in deriving the transfer function, we never use this phase plot. Only this magnitude plot we used and that is sufficient also. However, you know, you can use this phase plot to verify whether your answer is correct. So, this is a, you know, uh, what will be the phase of this transfer function? j omega q and therefore it is three times the angle of j omega. Angle of j omega is plus 90 and therefore 3 into 90 is 270 degree. This 270 degree I can write it as minus 92. Okay, so that is correct also. Here also it is minus 90. So therefore whatever we got is correct. Okay. I think you would have felt this is very easy. Okay, maybe sketching the body plot from the transfer function or getting the transfer function from the body. Both should be easy. If that is so, I have given two exercises. Here is one body plot. Try to get its transfer function, or you can take this as the transfer function and you can try plotting the body magnitude and phase plot.
here is one more example or exercise please try this with this we will wind up this lecture next lecture we will try to understand the body plots for transfer functions with poles at some non zero values of course poles and zeros at some non zero values thank you